Okay, uh, let's continue with tuberculosis. Uh, tuberculosis, uh, as you recall, is basically a progressive infection, is chronic. Um, often with a period of latency uh, followed by the initial infection. Uh, remember that TB is the leading uh, infectious cause of morbidity and mortality in adults uh, worldwide and even more in uh, middle to low income countries. HIV um, and AIDS is the most important factor predisposing to TB infection. And the mortality in parts of the world where both uh, infectious are prevalent, HIV and TB. Etiology, remember that TB uh, properly uh, refers only to disease caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis, for which humans are the main reservoir. Similar diseases occasional results from the closely related uh, mycobacteria such as uh, mycobacterium bovis, mycobacterium africanus, and microti. But um, mycobacterium tuberculosis uh, is, to, is one of the main um, that causes TB. But these uh, pr prior mentioned uh, mycobacteria are the one that are called mycobacterium tuberculosis complex. Remember that TB results so almost exclusively from inhalation of airborne particles. This is a droplet uh, precaution um, disease that contains uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis. They disperse primarily through coughing, singing, uh, respiratory maneuvers, and uh, of course, uh, any sputum that contains like, significant numbers of uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis. People with cavitary lesions are especially infectious because of the high number of bacteria contained within the lesion. Um, however, um, droplets uh, could be uh, seen on the uh, surface of any uh, object as well as the floor, shaking uh, hands, uh, shaking out bed linens, uh, sweeping the floor as the dust uh, particles come out to the air, um, it could become breathing particles. So although uh, such actions can resuspend dust particles containing tuberculosis uh, bacilli, these particles are too large to reach the alveolar surface uh, necessary to initiate an infection, but you have to be very careful um, because um, you know, even though it's, it is uh, transmitted by droplet, uh, there are many objects that could contain um, the TB. <clears throat> Contact with contaminated surface um, and food and even personal respirators do not appear to facilitate the spread, the spread but uh, it's, it's a high risk uh, uh, area for, for contamination and contagious. How contagious patients uh, with untreated active pulmonary TB um, could vary widely. Um, certain strains are more contagious than others, and patients with positive sputum smear are more contagious than those with positive results only on culture. As I said, patients with cavitary disease uh, which is only um, closely associated with mycobacteria or more contagious than those without. Environmental factors also are important. Uh, transmission is enhanced by frequent or prolonged exposure to untreated patients who are dispersing a large number of TB in overcrowded, uh, poor ventilated enclosed spaces such as people living in poverty or institutions. Healthcare practitioners who have close contact with active cases have increased risk. Those uh, estimates uh, of contagions vary widely. Some studies suggest that only one in three patients with untreated pulmonary TB infect any close contact. Much less common contagious results from uh, our aerosolization um, after irrigation of infected wounds, 
uh, mycobacteriologic uh, laboratories or in autopsy rooms. Um, if you're doing biopsy of a lymph node or uh, any aspiration of joints that contains uh, any type of mycobacteria. So epidemiology, uh, two billions of infected people died. One third of the world population is infected. There is uh, an acquired resistance to TB medications uh, and it's actually growing and increasing over the years. And basically it's due to uh, inappropriate prescribed treatment regimens or from patients non-compliance. Multi-drug resistant TB is becoming more and more of a problem. Pathophysiology, as we said, um, mycobacterium tuberculosis uh, initially uh, caused a primary infection, which uncommonly causes acute illness. Most, about 90% or 95% uh, of the primary infections are asymptomatic and followed by uh, a latent or dormant phase. <laughs> a variable percentage of latent infection subsequently reactivates with symptoms. Infection is not usually um, transmitted in the primary stage and is never contagious in the latent stage. TV is inhaled into the alveoli and spread from the lungs. It's a slowly growing uh, bacilli and infection. Um, and as we said, even though it's present in many uh, surfaces, uh, infection is uh, almost exclusively by aerosolization of contaminated lung secretions. Talking about primary infection before we go into the treatment requires inhalation of particles small enough to traverse the upper respiratory defenses and being deposited deep into the lungs, usually in the subpleural spaces of the middle and lower lobes. Larger droplets tend to lodge into the more proximal airways, but typically do not result in infection. Infection usually begins from a single droplet nuclei. Perhaps only a single organism may surface to cause infection in susceptible people, but less susceptible people may require repeated exposure to, to develop infection. So it really depends on your immune system. So to initiate an infection, mycobacteria tuberculosis must be um, inside the alveolar macrophages. Bacilli that are not killed by the macrophages actually replicate inside them, ultimately killing the host macrophage with the help of the CD8 lymphocytes. Inflammatory cells are attracted to the area, causing a focal pneumonitis that coalesces into the tuberculi and to the cavitation. In the early weeks of infection, some infected macrophages migrate to regional lymph nodes that could produce uh, mediastinal lymphadenopathies and hyalur in the lung lymphadenopathies where they access to the bloodstream. Then the organism may spread through the blood to any other part of the body, particularly in the apical portion of the lung or the apices. In addition, it, they could be deposited in the kidney, in the vertebral bodies, in the lung bones, even in the meninges. That spread is less likely in patients with partial immune um, due to vaccination or prior uh, natural infection of the mycobacteria tuberculosis. In 95% of cases after three weeks, the immune system suppresses the replication of the TB if you are well immunocompetent, usually before symptoms or signs develop. Foci or bacilli in the lung or other sites resolve into granulomas, which may have cautious or necrotic center. Remember pathophysiology, the different type of granulomas. TB can survive in these materials for years. The balance between the host resistance and microbacterial uh, virulency determines whether the infection resolved without treatment, 
remains dormant or becomes active. So the infectious foci may leave scar in the apices of the lungs. So sometimes you receive patients that they never were aware that they had TV and you see scars and you see cavitations, you see granulomas that could be completely chronic. But of course, if you do not know the history of that patient, you have to further investigate and um, you could do a bronchoscopy or you could do VATS procedure or a biopsy and uh, analyze if this is an active or chronic condition. The granulomas could calcify. Less often, the primary focus progresses immediately, causing acute illness with pneumonia, sometimes with cavitary uh, pneumonia or pleurofusion, or marked mediastinal or hilar lymphadenopathy. If you're going to tap uh, the fusion, the uh, pleural fusion is more lymphocytic in nature. Um, no, um, no, it's, it's not mediated by uh, neutrophils. Patients could also develop extra pulmonary TV. So that means that uh, it, it goes over um, to other sites. Uh, besides the lung involvement. Now remember that uh, signs and symptoms um, of TV, you have the uh, anorexia, fatigue, weight loss, you have cough, very very common. At first uh, it could be minimally productive, uh, progressing to yellow or greenish sputum, usually when awakening in the morning but cough may become more productive as the disease progresses uh, up to uh, having hemoptysis that occurs only with cavitary TV. Low grade fever is common as well. Nice sweats are classic symptoms but are neither common nor specific for TV. Patients um, could have dyspnea that may result from lump parenchymal damage spontaneous pneumothorax with uh, HIV co-infection the clinical presentation is often very atypical patients uh, are more likely to have symptoms of extra pulmonary or disseminated disease diagnosis uh, is done by uh, chest x-ray acid fast stain and culture uh, tubercul uh, tuberculin skin test uh, or interferon gamma release assay and when available, nucleic acid based testing. So, patients uh, um, could have a screening via PPD or quantiferon TB serum test. Um, pulmonary TB is often suspected based on chest x ray taken while evaluating respiratory symptoms, such as cough for more than three weeks, hemoptysis, chest pain, pleuritic, uh, dyspnea, unexplained uh, illness fever of a non-origin and of course a positive PPD. Suspicious of TV is uh, higher in patients who have fever, uh, prolonged cough, night nice sweats, weight loss, lymphadenopathy and in patients with possible TB exposure via infected family member, friends or any type of contact in any institution. Initial tests or chest x-ray uh, sputum examination and culture. Chest x-ray basically what you see is a multi-nodular infiltrate above or behind the clavicle which is more characteristic of TV but it could be widespread such as immiliary tuberculosis. It's best of course localizing the apexes uh, uh, on a CT chest uh, but middle and um, lower lung infiltrates could be present as well as miliary tuberculosis, as I said. Sputum testing is the main stay of diagnosis of TB. If patients cannot produce sputum, you could use aerosolocyte hypertonic saline and induce the sputum, or you could do... Um, bronchoscopy and bronchial washing, which is particular sensitive um, 
to induce uh, a sputum by bronchoscopy. Now, patients could exposed uh, medical staff more uh, risk of infection, you know, whoever participates in the bronchoscopy. The first step is typically microscopic examination to check for acid fast bacilli. Then um, you could also do um, drug susceptibility testing, uh, you could do quarantiferon test, you could do transbronchial biopsies. Remember that for the for the TV um, for the PPD test, the cutoff point for positive reaction depends on the clinical setting. For example, five millimeters patients at high risk of developing active TV if infected, such as those who have chest X-ray evidence for past TV, whoever is immunocompromised, um, such as HIV patients or patients that are prolonged corticosteroid use, uh, patients that are on tumor necrosis factor inhibitors, or whoever is close contact to patients with infectious TB. 10 millimeters patients with some risk, such as injection drug users, recent immigrants uh, from high prevalence areas, uh, residents uh, of prison, homeless, shelters, uh, patients with certain disorders such as diabetes, head and neck cancer, silicosis, gastrectomy, um, gastric bypass surgery that are because of malnourishment, they tend to be uh, a little bit immunocompromised. And uh, 15 millimeters uh, patients who are no risk at all. Um, so a normal person. Results can be falsely negative, mostly on patients that are HIV. Remember, they have what's called an anergia, or patients that are very, very ill. So they show no reaction to any skin test, and that's called an anergy or energy. Okay. Treatment. It's very uh, important to encourage patients to complete the whole uh, treatment. Otherwise, uh, patients could develop resistance. Most patients with uncomplicated TV and all patients with complicated illness, such as uh, patients that have, in addition, HIV, hepatitis, diabetes, etc., average drug reaction or drug resistance, should be treated with a, a TV specialist, uh, basically um, either uh, thoracic surgery or uh, infectious disease physician or a pulmonary. Most uh, patients with TB can be treated as outpatient with instruction of how to prevent transmission, of course, and it has to be patients that are compliant. And that includes staying at home, avoid uh, visitors, except, of course, for previously exposed family members, covering cough with a t-shirt or elbow and or mask, more even better. Uh, surgical face masks for TB patients are stigmatizing and are typical, not recommended for cooperative patients. Um, but the majority forget. Precautions are needed until drug treatment has made patients sufficiently non-contagious for patients with proven drug susceptibility. So, hospitalization is basically indicated for serious concomitant illness, need for diagnostic procedures, social issues such as homelessness, need for respiratory isolation as for people living in congregate settings or uh, with previously exp unexposed people would be regularly encountered. Uh, initially, uh, all hospitalization, um, all hospitalized patients should be in respiratory isolation, ideally in a negative pressure room. Um, anyone entering the room should wear a respiratory mask, uh, N95 or greater.
you go to uh, basically the um, the website for CDC and you would have all the public health considerations for TV based on HIV, psychiatric illness, uh, um, but let's concentrate on the pharmacological treatment. So the first line drug would be isoniazide, rifampine, pyrazinamide, and etambutol. Even though you have listed uh, more combinations such as rifabutin, uh, rifapentine, uh, but the main are first-line drug, isoniazide, rifampin, pyrazinamide, and etambutol. They're used together in initial treatment. Isoniazide is given orally once daily, has very good tissue penetration, including the CSF, has highly vectoricidal, and is least is the least expensive. It could be used as monotherapy, but again, you will use it as combination. The main non stroke reactions are rash fever, and rarely you have to uh, look for anemia and agranulocytosis, and also check LFTs. One of the main um, things that you have to remember is the possibility of induced uh, peripheral neuropathy on isoniazide. So every single patient that is the on isoniazide must be um, co-treated with pyridoxine, which is vitamin B6, because isoniazide could produce vitamin B6 deficiency, and even more in pregnant and breastfeeding women, patients with diabetes, alcoholic, patient with cancer, patient elderly, but just to avoid any type of population. Uh, you should put every single patient that is on isoniazide on uh, vitamin B6. Don't forget that. Now, rifampin is also um, a bactericidal that also has very, very well absorption uh, and penetration in the CSF, eliminates the dormant organism in microphages and even in cautious necrosis areas. The main adverse stroke reactions are jaundice, uh, fever, thrombocytopenia. Refamping, um, one of the main problems is that tends to stain all the secretions in orange. So just uh, inform uh, the patient that do not get scared if they see orange uh, urine, orange tears, orange everything. All the secretions, they tend to uh, be stained um, in uh, orange color. The newer rifamycins or rifampin family are the one listed, uh, rifabutin and rifapentin. Basically, they're used for patients taking drugs uh, such as antiretroviral drugs. They have unacceptable interactions with rifampin or when used uh, with clarithromycin or fluconazole because they're less um, cytochrome P450s. Rifapentin is used in one dose uh, per week regimen, um, but it's not used in children or patients with HIV or any type of extra pulmonary TB. Paracinamide is, uh, is also bactericidal when used during uh, intensive um, initial two months of treatment, it shortens the direction of therapy to six months and prevents development of resistance to refamping. Major side effects are GI upset and hepatitis, but often could produce hyperuricemia and induces gout. Ethambutol is the very well tolerated first line drug uh, it's also bactericidal. Um, its main toxicity is optic neuritis. So you must recall isoniazide given vitamin B6. You must recall refamping, staining um, uh, orange color, all the secretions, and ethambutol, you must refer the patient. 
to follow with an ophthalmologist because it could induce optic neuritis. In addition, um, it could impair renal function, so check beyond and creatinine. Second line drugs, you have either cyclosine, ethoyanamide, moxifloxacin, gatifloxacin, you have streptomycin. Once the, was the most common used aminoglycoside, is very effective and is also bactericidal. You know that um, all these aminoglycosides, including amikacin, canamycin, streptomycin, they're auto and nephrotoxicities. Fluoroquinolones, uh, remember that um, for the most active and safe uh, TB drugs after isoniazide and refamping but they're not the first-line drugs. You could use moxifloxacin. You could also use um, ethionamide or cyclozerine that are basically amino salicylic acid, um, but they're less effective and more toxic than the above. Drug resistance develops through spontaneous genetic mutation. Incomplete, erratic, or single drug therapy selects for this resistance organism. So if the patient is uh, uh, resistant to isoniazide, um, then you could substitute isoniazide uh, with catifloxacin, for example. It really depends on, on the antibiogram anti of your particular um, city or, or hospital or even county. So high risk uh, children less than age uh, 4, HIV, transplant patient, uh, foreign born uh, patients um, are you know, high risk for developing this disease process. Treatment uh, regimen uh, should contain multiple drugs, so try to go for the initial choice first combination. If there is any resistance, then you could substitute. The drugs more be taken, must be taken regularly um, for a sufficient period of time. Uh, there are two phases of treatment, the initiation phase and the continuation phase. So the initiation phase uh, you continue for the first two months and the continuation phase up to even seven months. So the CDC guideline says for six to nine months regimen. They basically encourage that. There are uh, many patients that are uh, resistant. Uh, so try to know your antibiogram uh, local and even uh, nationally. Uh, treat with at least two drugs that TB is sensitive to. If a patient is resistant to multiple first-line drugs, then at least three new drugs that the organism is susceptible should be administered, so try to switch. Remember that patient, um, if they're pregnant and are lactating, treat with isoniazide and refamping. Don't forget the vitamin B6. Remember that isoniazide could induce hepatitis, so check liver enzymes. For pediatric patients, uh, if you're unable to get sputum, um, you could do uh, bronchoscopy, but you could also do gastric lab ash. Remember that they tend to swallow their own secretions. They have, they're more immunocompromised, so the TB tends to uh, progress to miliary or diffuse and even to meningitis. Um, they to tolerate very well isoniazide and refamping. Don't forget your vitamin B6. Remember that HIV, uh, sometimes they have energy, so they do not uh, project uh, a positive uh, PPD, and they tend to have more extra pulmonary TBs because they're immunocompromised. And the treatment is exactly the same. So how do you know the patient is uh, uh, well-treated and uh, um, in remission, when the sputum cultures, you have to do sputum cultures monthly until negative. That's how you know the patient is not, not contagious anymore. 
and at least two must be negative. Chest X-ray, a completion of therapy, uh, must be done to document that the lesion has improved or uh, is gone. Um, monitor based on the drug that you're giving uh, possible side effects and uh, adverse drug reactions such as LFTs, bilirubin, beyond and creatinine, and also for isoniazide that could produce neutropenia and thrombocytopenia CVC. Um, for ethambutol, you must refer to an ophthalmologist for a baseline exam and also every six uh, months uh, to follow. Uh, monitor for hepatitis for isoniazide and also peripheral neuropathy for isoniazide. So TB free after two months of treatment, um, the sputum should be negative. Inquire patient compliance. Very critical for success is the education. So all, mo all medications must be taken as scheduled. Repeat education at each monthly visit. And uh, you also you should get a counselor as well. Um, how to prevent tuberculosis? Positive TB test, uh, but no signs of active TB. So you must ask in every visit, um, do you have any cough, fever, nice sweats, dyspnea, etc. So for prevention, uh, if the patient was exposed to an active, uh, uh, if a person was exposed to an active patient with TB, you could do isoniazide alone for six to nine months. And of course, you have to monitor the same uh, side effects uh, even if the patient never uh, developed any symptom after the exposure with an active TB person. Directly observe therapy. Um, and successful treatment is determined by absence of the disease, by either sputum negative, chest x-ray completely negative, no symptoms. Thank you very much. So this is the end of TB.